last week the weather was hot, this week it's cold. It's supposed to get hot again this weekend. The world changes so much, so quickly. That's why we need to train the mind, because otherwise our happiness goes up and down with the conditions of the world. And the conditions of the world just do that. They don't really go to any one place and stay there. They keep spinning around. And if we don't have a good solid center, we spin around with the world and get dizzy and have no idea what's right and wrong, what's skillful, what's not skillful. That's when we need to take the mind out of the world for a bit, bring it here to the breath. Be right here with the breath in the present moment, because this is your anchor in the present moment. And it also gives you something to work with in the present moment as well, because otherwise you get bored. You're, we're used to the ups and downs. And so when there aren't so many ups and downs, we get bored, and we go out looking for some more. So you realize when you're looking at the breath coming in and going out, there's a lot of different ins and outs to the breath, and you want to explore them. At the same time, you want to get to know your mind, exactly why is the mind wanting to go out. When the breath is comfortable and you have a sense of well-being with the breath, then it's a lot easier to see that the going out is not so attractive. You go out because you think you're going to get some pleasure, and usually it's because you're hungry for pleasure. We've got something right here. It's actually okay to be here with the breath. It may not be exciting, but still it gives you a sense of well-being from which you can notice the hunger that pulls you out and goes spinning around with the world again. But then you know what hunger is like. You take food in, and then it goes out. You take more in, and it keeps going out. There's no real sense of satisfaction there. And same with the things we try to feed on for our emotional hunger or our mental hungers. <coughs> these things keep leaving us as well. So you want to look inside to see, is there something that doesn't have all these ups and downs, something where you can really arrive? It really does have long-lasting value. So that's what we're looking for inside. So the mind's well-being doesn't have to depend on the ups and downs of the world outside. They talk about how everything is interconnected out there and how wonderful that interconnection is. Well, look at the weather. Sometimes it's nice here and it's miserable someplace else, or it's nice there and it's miserable here. Those things are interconnected, and it's very unstable. And just because things are interconnected doesn't mean that everybody in the interconnected parts loves one another. Or what's good for one side is good for another side. As the Buddha pointed out, these interconnections are actually the cause of suffering. So we want to get the mind to a place where it doesn't have to be interconnected like that. That's what we're looking for. It goes against our nature in a lot of ways, because we're so used to the ups and downs and the instabilities. But when you get a taste of that unconnected, unconditioned side, though, then you realize that there's nothing out here it can compare. 